Yo, what's good, y'all? ZRK, Eric Vargas, high off music, you heard me? <laughs> so tell, tell them about yourself. Basically, I'm a producer, engineer. I've been doing this for over 10 years in the game, working with underground artists, working with up and coming artists, working with all types of stuff, artists, movies, TV shows, all types of things. It's working on anything basically dealing with sound. No, really. So how did you get in, involved or invested in sound? Where was that start for you? Uh, sound? I would say it started from high school. It started from when I, when I started doing music. I started doing beats. And like around high school, I started with some, uh, some software called Making Waves. It was some real basic thing. I just started throwing little loops in there, messing with little tempos, and came up with a little loop and little beat. Shit was ill. All my boys was jumping with me like, oh, this shit's crazy, this shit's crazy. And I wasn't really even engineering at that time. I was just basically just banging out. But I needed, I needed somebody to engineer my shit. I didn't have no engineer to do nothing, so I took it upon my own and started engineering. At that time, I, I got involved with a studio in Midtown in Hell's Kitchen. I was about 16 or 17 years old. And at that time, uh, we got like a whole big setup. I didn't know how to use nothing. I had a book like I have a bunch of books of the manuals of how to use it. It was a it was a um, a Mackie DAB with all these internal cards, digital cards in it, and uh, and a Mac. It was I had a Mac. It was the first Mac I ever started working with too. And then we had all that stuff hooked up. I didn't know how to use it. We had to fly one of my other friends who was like a really, really involved engineer. He was real good at it. He came and he kind of showed me and shit. His name is Triple X, shout out to Triple X. And uh, we was this, he showed me how to rock everything. Now I took it from there. And that was around like, in high school, that was 2000 and probably two, 2002, 2003. So we would say around that time. And then I left to college after high school. I left the college in uh, Florida, Orlando, Florida, by the name of Full Sail University. Well, why go to, why, what'd you go to college for, for music? I went for, well, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention this, but like when I was, when I was in the studio working in, in Midtown for, for, for all, like maybe about a year and a half, like at that time, I was in a, in, in a time of my life where I had to make a transition from, from what I'm gonna do as a career and as a hobby, how can I combine these two things together? And like, you know, talking with my parents and everything, like we came up with like a whole idea of me going to school for, for maybe doing something involved with sound and what I'm really already dealing with. So I, I decided to go to school down there just to combine everything what I'm doing as far as my music and a career at that time of my life, you know? Yeah. So college was the, was the best choice? At that time, I, you know, at that time it was no, you know, it was no uh, Kanye, you know, talking about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> graduation and all that crazy shit. But at the end of the day, I, I went to school and it just trained me to be better. And I'm still learning to this day, still learning. What would be your advice to to any producer coming in the game? I mean, like the way you came in. Well, I'm still coming in the game, man. Like I'm still grinding every day. When I'm in the studio nonstop, like, I think about the next producer, if he's up making beats, if he's sleeping, like, I'm trying to be there, trying to learn new things all the time. Just trying to just basically move forward, push forward. That's the thing in any direction. But for those, I mean, for those who don't know you, where are you originally from? From Brooklyn? This is kind of weird, man, but I lived in Brooklyn all my life, but I didn't go to school in Brooklyn. I didn't really chill in Brooklyn. I went to school in the Lower East Side, Manhattan. And all my family's from the Lower East Side, Manhattan. So I was always hanging out on the Lower East Side. But at the very end of the, the night, I always had to go back to Brooklyn, you know? It was one of those, like, Brooklyn, Manhattan love things, you know? So I rep LES, LES all the time. But Brooklyn, too, I have so much love for my Brooklyn, you know? Love Brooklyn to the heart. Now. Looking at your discography, it seems that you went real far in your career. Like, explain that progress. All right, basically, you know, 
after me going to college, uh, I had my best friend, Greg Diaz. He was going to college at that time too. He was taking business. And as I was in college, we, was in, we had great communication and he was like about to finish. And I was like, yo, try to get an internship somewhere, somewhere in, uh, in a record label or something like that. Or I, we wasn't even thinking of a studio. We were thinking of like the record label. So anyway, he ended up getting involved with Full Surface Records, which was a uh, Swiss Beats of his label that he had started at that time. And uh, he was interning, and I was in the, in, in, in the midst of me graduating from Full Sail. So he somehow set it up where I just started coming up at, at, at the studio, because Swiss had just bought a studio at that same time I was graduating in, uh, in uh, 36 West 37th Street in Manhattan. It, he bought it from uh, Wu-Tang's Peoples. It was a 36 chamber studio. I believe like all the Wu-Tang records was recorded there and stuff like that. And at that time, I was just there all the time cleaning up, whatever. I was just there. Just I was just happy to be there to see Swiss. He used to come through a little, Swiss, what up? He used to see me a little bit. He didn't really know who I was and shit. And, then, and after a while, me being there all the time, like I was just always there. Like. And then it was another engineer there. His name was uh, TP, my man TP. And then uh, he was a chief engineer there. And it happened to be one day he uh, TP left the studio to do some other project, and I was there to just pick up from where they left. It, like right then and there, like Swiss came up to me and he was like, "Yo, can you take the session tonight?" I, I was just always behind TP trying to see the buttons he was pressing, even though I went to school. But every room. It's set up different, like you know, you don't know the signal flow all the time, like where where it's coming from, what booth, what cable, stuff like that, because it's a really big place. And then I, so somehow I, I just got I got it going, and that was Sizzler, that was a, a Sizzler session, that was a, we was doing a a thing for for BET. It was a show at that time, the Ultimate Hustler for BET. Yeah, um, we did uh, like we did like a lot of the music in there. The Sizzler. I don't know if you, if you guys if you guys search it, you find uh, the Sizzler. Why, why, why? Um, uh, things gonna come my way. We did that shit there. That we we did all that, all them sounds that we recorded it. I even remember he was like, "Bumba Clot, get the recording, man." Cause like I, I was like stumbling, fumbling and shit like that, but. I made it happen and shit. I remember. I still remember. He had he had the the spliff hanging off his lip, telling me that shit. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that shit was old then, bro. But that was that was one of them times that in the stool was classic, and my heart was like this. But I made sure I, I had to really engineer it. You know what I'm saying? Even though I ne I wasn't even thinking about beats really at that time, cause I was thinking about really engineering the shit out of this. You know what I'm saying? At that time. I was really like trying to engineer, like trying to make sure this shit's popping. So then I could really ease myself when like a producer, you know what I'm saying? But then I just started lifting off as an engineer crazy at that time as well. At that day, man, I would say that day I got I got blessed because like TP took uh, upon another project which which took up all his time that he had to go do because he's he was in the game before me. OG, he's my OG. I consider him my OG when it comes to the engineering shit because he was before me at that spot. I know us engineers, we feel kind of certain way, like I'm going into your house and I'm gonna take your job. Like, like that, even though that was my intentions, but not in that way, like trying to take his job, trying to work with him. So after me taking that job as being a chief engineer at Monza Studio, cause Swiss renamed it to Monza Studios and that was it. It was history from there. I worked on all these different projects at that time. I recorded uh, Eve, uh, Busta Rhymes, DMX, uh, Mary J. Blige, uh, Alicia Keys, Swiss Beats, of course. I don't know if I mentioned him already. Uh, Mashonda, Cassidy, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, uh, fabulous, uh, I would dip set, and of course I, I cannot fail to mention I recorded. Uh, well, I didn't record because Tupac. I, I wasn't able to record Pac himself, but uh, I've worked on uh, one of uh, Tupac's albums called Pac's Life. 
It was one of the singles called The Untouchables. The following collection. Swizzy, man. In my room, cause I wanna get it on till I die. In my room, cause I wanna get it on till I die. Get it on till I die. Get it on till I die. Y'all, y'all remember me? Y'all, y'all remember me? And uh, also I worked on a Notorious B.I.G.'s album called uh, The Biggie Duets. We did the, the single on that as well. It was called uh, Spit Your Game. I know you guys know that joint, cause that's a knocker right there. And we engineered that, and it was nice. As far as when it comes to me engineering it, what did I do? Uh, I laid everything in in the in the beat. Like as far as Swiss was on the MPC, he was on the MPC 3000 at that time. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't tell you what was in the studio. What was in the studio <laughs> was an Amec 9098i crazy crazy board it was some retarded shit that I was working on he had some crazy speakers some some custom in the wall joints and we was running pro tools we was running pro tools that we had avalons different compressors we was also, we was using the 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 preamps from the board itself the amac it was a big room it had like it had three three uh rooms it had a main room it had a small little vocal booth and then it had like another little isolation room on the other end. You could put something else over there. Give you a little perspective of how the spot was, because that was my home for a while. Crazy. We did crazy joints in there. I mean, with all that notoriety that you mentioned, what can you say you've learned from that? Man, I learned a lot, man. I've learned a lot. I've learned uh, so many ways to, to, to deal with people, artists, capture their, their, their energy, because that's what I do, like, capture their energy, like, come in the, in the room with an idea, but sometimes everything got to be up to par. The room, it was times we had the room set up crazy for them to feel inspired, bunch of art things, uh, books, all types of things, crazy candles for, like, for instance, for Mary, we had that shit set up crazy, had candles, all types of shit, make her feel good. But it's all types of ways to really capture the artist's energy and to really have it down packed for where they feel themselves as well. You know, and I learned that's like one of my major things that I've learned. That's why I know how to really work with artists and stuff like that as far as when I'm producing and stuff, you know. After working with Swiss for so many years, uh, he inspired me, which he always inspired me when I was working with him, was to move on and, and try to get my own spot. So I decided to get my own spot. I invested in a spot in New Jersey, right over the, the Holland Tunnel, I believe it was. Man, I tell you, location, location, location. Because when even me being right there so close to New York City where most of my business is at, it was so hard for people to come to where I was at. So I decided to move back to Brooklyn, which I was in Williamsburg. And when I was in Williamsburg, I had left out of the country for a month or so with Japan, I believe. And my studio got robbed. I invested so much money in my studio and everything that I worked so hard for got robbed. And I didn't even have insurance because I just had moved to that spot. So I was in the midst of getting all my insurance. Everything all fell through. This was an article that was interviewing me about Swiss and stuff like that, about us working and, you know, this, all the projects and, they asked me all these different questions. I, I haven't even had it translated like that. I had it somewhat translated, but I don't even know. Where you at now? Right now, we in Brooklyn, got my own studio. You know, me and my partners, we got some studio popping here, the Velvet Room. Got this looking real, real, it's real nice right now for me, cause this is my, this is my pilot. I'm a pilot, and you know, a cockpit, how big is a cockpit? It ain't that big. This is all I need. The joint I was working on earlier. I don't want to turn it too much. You know what I mean? 
what's your what's your beat making process like? How does it start for you making a beat? Making a beat? I just I I listen to music sometimes. It depends. I have different methods. Like I listen to music, vibe out, get a little energy, get a get a little vibe, tempo, you know what I mean? Feel the tempo, fuck with the tempo and shit. And then I go bang out. Sometimes I come in the studio, I just go put some instrument up or something, and then I just start going through them. Or a lot of times I just go through joints that I that I already have like a little structure on and I just keep building. Cause I don't really like to force beats out. Sometimes I can make a joint like that, bang it out. Sometimes I, I sit on it. I just I have like a little part, a little piece, then I fall back on it. I come back, I listen to it, I'm like, damn, how I didn't fucking hear that before? And then I lay it right there and then it becomes something. It, it starts growing because I, I felt something different and I listened to it at a different time. Because, you know, when you're making music, you listen to it over and over and over and over. It gets repetitious, so sometimes your ears get fatigued. So I step out, rest, you know, come back, brand new ears, and I feel different and I continue, you know? So with your, with your brand new studio, which is like saying a brand new start like are you taking on artists or like what's your intention with with your new endeavor your new entrepreneurship well right now um i'm basically having people come in who want to record their albums record their mixtape record uh overdubs doing a project for film uh doing commercial background, trying to create sounds, trying to do something dealing with, with sound and music, because I do both of them. And having clients here working 24 hours, 24 hour access here. How does it feel to finally have your own? It feels good, man, because I, I, have, I still have tons of equipment in my house. I just gotta bring it. I'm still in the midst of bringing everything from my house to here, because it don't stop. Uh, I'm still in the house with my MacBook Pro going in on my Logic in the crib. And I'm gonna come here, bring my stuff here, and really feel like I'm finally home. Like, I really, I really feel like that. I come in here, it, 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 it's like a whole other feel. Like, I get to really be in my zone. Like, it has like this feel that I just, I get to feel like it's like an extension of my crib. Like, I feel like I'm just going like this, out the door into my crib. Like that, you know, that's how it feels in here. I get the freedom to really work and what's your work? What's your work ethic like? 24 hours, 24 hours. Man, I go home to so go do my thing in the crib, wake up, studio. This is the office for me. When I be like, hey, I'm in the office. I'm in the office, office. Yo, so now that you know, Eric Vargas here, aka High Off Music, aka ERK. We here in the Velvet Room, baby. Spreadtheword.com. Yeah. <laughs>